this is part two in our discussion about the strengths of acids and bases. In this video, we're going to discuss about percent ionization of weak acids and bases. Again, weak acids and bases, they partially ionize, that is, in opposite with strong acids and bases. Again, strong acids and strong bases, they are strong because they completely ionize, that is, their degree of ionization is 100%. So, all of the given amount of strong acids and bases ionize in the reaction. And again, for weak acids and bases, it's partial, meaning it's less than, it's less than 100%. And that's what we are going to compute in this video. When weak acids and bases are dissolved in water, the dissolved molecules are in equilibrium with their ions in their solution. So here, we are going to, uh, to compute for the concentration of ions with the help of our equilibrium constant and then the equilibrium expression. So we're going back to our discussion about equilibrium to find out the concentration of the ions here and then the percent ionization of our weak acids and bases. So here we have the reaction of acetic acid forming H plus and then acetate. So here we're going to uh, write the equilibrium expression first. That is the equilibrium constant K is equal to the concentration of the products. The products here are the H plus that is raised to the power of 1. So that's 1 because the coefficient here is 1. That is times the concentration of the other product. On this case, we have the acetate C2H3O2 minus raised to the power of 1. Over the concentration of our reactants, we have the acetic acid HC2H3O2. So this one is the equilibrium expression for this acid. Since this one is for acid, we write here A. So we have here Ka. So this one is the acid ionization constant. It's simply the equilibrium expression for an acid. We can also do the same thing for a base. Here we have ammonia reacting with water to form ammonium and then hydroxide ion. The same thing, let's write the equilibrium expression for this one. That is the um, equilibrium constant K equals the, again, concentration of the products. We have the concentration of NH4 plus raised to the power of 1. Again, based on the coefficient here, multiplied to the other products, we have hydroxide ion over the concentration of our reactants, we have ammonia. We have here NH3, also raised to the power of 1. And then here, H2O is pure liquid. And again, this is not included because pure liquids, pure solids are again not included in the equilibrium expression. So this one is the equilibrium expression for this uh, base. So for base, we write here B. So B for base, A for acid. So again, this one is the um, acid ionization constant. This one is the base ionization constant. And again, this K here, this is constant, and this can be determined experimentally. So, and this is specific for a particular acid. So for this one, for this acetic acid, the, the Ka is actually 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Then for KB, it happens na it's the same thing. It's 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. So again, this KB depends on the given. So it depends on the type of acids and bases. So again, uh, of course, if we have our KA, then we can actually calculate for the concentrations of any substances in this equilibrium. We'll use this one to answer this question. We have here... Uh, calculate the concentration of H plus and percent ionization of two molar acetic acid given the reaction. And then the Ka here is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. The first thing is we need to calculate for the H plus concentration. And for that, we can use the I stable. Again, that's the ICE. So, of course, that's... Okay, that's initial change and then the equilibrium. So here we have the acetic acid, H plus, and then the acetate. Initial, that's before the reaction. The given here is 2 molar of acetic acid. 
then the H plus, and then the S, then then the acetate here. These are the products on this case, and of course we don't have any amount of the product, so this will be zero. And then here we have the change, so we'll put here X since we don't know the change here. Since here our reactants are decreasing over time, we put here minus X. And then for the formation of H plus and then this acetate here, of course, that's plus because they are increasing in concentration over time. And then here we look on the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation and this tells us that they have the same um, change in the concentrations. We'll put also here X and then X here. So again, that's of course 1X, one 1X, one 1X. One and of course, since it's 1, we don't need to write 1 over here. Again, this is based on the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Then here, of course, the equilibrium. This is uh, the sum of the of the of the initial plus the change. So we have here 2m, 2 molar minus x. Then here, 0 plus x. It's obviously x. Then here we have the same thing. It's also x. So here we're going to make an assumption because here our Ka is very, very small. That's 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. That's equal to 0 0.000018. So our Ka here is very, very small. So again, when our K is much, much less than 1, this means that this favors the, uh, this favors the, uh, this favors the reactants. So meaning on this case, there is much reactance compared to the product. This means that there's almost no change. There's almost no change on the given amount of our reactance. So here we'll assume that the x here is very, very small. We're going to assume that here x, again here x is the decrease in the concentration of the reactance. But again here, since this favors the reactance, we expect that there's less change in the concentration of the reactants. So we're going to make an assumption here x is approximately equal to 0. So if we assume that here x is equal to 0, so of course that's 2m minus 0 that's equal to 2m. So this one is for the um, equilibrium concentration of our reactant. And then we have here these numbers we can actually calculate now for the concentration of H plus, we can use our equilibrium expression. Again, that's equal to K is equal to the concentration of the product. We have H plus times the concentration of our other product. We have C2H3O2 raised to the power of 1. Again, that's 1, 1, 1. So it's, then here we have the concentration of the acetic acid. We have HC2H3O2. And again, this one is the, uh, this is the, for, uh, for an acid, so we are right here Ka. And again, for Ka, we have determine, it's given, that's 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Let's put this one in our equation, that is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. That's equal to the concentration of our H, and again, here it's X for now, that's X, and then here it's also X over the concentration of our uh, acetic acid that's equal to 2 molar. That's equal to 2 molar. And then we're going to find for the value of x here. Again here x is our concentration of the H plus and that's what we are going to find here first. Of course x times x is equal to x squared right over 2m. Then we have 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5. Next, uh, let's cross multiply. That's x squared is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 5 times 2. Again, I just cross multiply this one. Of course, we assume there is a there's a, denomin a denominator of 1 here. So we multiply this one. Uh, 1 times x squared, x squared, then 1.8, blah, 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 times 2. So we have, it, oh, we have it over here, 2 molar. Next, we're going to multiply this one, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 1 .8 times 10 to the power of negative, sorry. 1.8 1 .1 times 10 to the power of negative 5 
then we're going to multiply this one by 2 is equal to 0. Uh, pat na 0 then 36 0. 0.000036 then we have here x squared and again finding for x we get the square root of both sides of course the square root of x squared is x then let's get the square root of this number so calculator square root is equal to 0 0.006 so here our x is equal to 0 0.006 006. So here our x is equal to 0 0.006. The same thing for this other one is also equal to 0 0.006. Right now we have the concentration of our H plus and from this we can now calculate for our uh, percent ionization. Let me use this space. So here the percent ionization is equal to what we actually have. So here we only have 0 0.006 of the H plus. We have here 0 0.006 molar over our given. So our given concentration of acid is 2 molar. So that's 2 molar over here. Then of course since we are uh, since we are finding for the percent we're going to multiply this one by 100% then let's multiply this one 0 0.006 0 0.006 divided by 2 okay that's 0 0.003 then let's convert this one to percent is equal to 0 0.03 so 0 0.03 am I correct okay sorry it's 0 0.3% 0.3% 0.3% so this one is the percent ionization for this one again what we have is we have two molar of this acetic acid but only some are ionized so it's only 0.006 molar so again we get the percent of this so 0.006 of 2 that's 0.03%. So again, this one is a weak acid, so it's less than 1% ionized from this reaction.